ومداد كلماته الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Dear brothers the topic of خطبة today is about the Muslim is in a mission, the Muslim in action. We all go for business, for missions. And we know that we have been created in this life for a mission. We say the Allah Azza wa Jalla saying, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ 
we know this is the mission for worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal. But when you compare it to the mission in dunya, if you are going to a mission in London, then you are keen to do everything you can, as perfect as you can, return back home safe as soon as you can. If we have been asked, what about if we open the bank for you today? The bank is open, no looks, everything there, I will give you a time there to collect as much valuable as you can. What you are going to do? Are you going to rush to the coins? Five pounds, 10 pounds, collect the 20s and 50s? What you are going to do? First thing you will look, where is the diamond? Take the diamond first. And then after that, if you have a time, you collect the others. Yes. This is how we prioritize in dunya our action. Everyone wants to work little and earn more. No doubt about that. It has to be the same attitude when it comes to the mission of Akhirah. It is just not haphazard. You do anything in the dunya, Salam alaikum, I'm done. You need the diamond. So, the difficulty of the mission we have in this dunya is we don't know when our mission is going to end. Am I going to die today? Tomorrow? Next week? After a year? After a month? We don't know when the mission is going to finish. So it's better if I'm in my health, if I'm still alive, if I'm still able to do things, is to go for the diamond. What is the diamond? Everyone can think about what are his good deeds he's doing in this dunya, rightest deed he's doing. I am praying, alhamdulillah, I'm making dhikr, can do this, we can do that. But today, today I'm just going to highlight the diamond in the religion. You go for the diamond, and after that, you can do anything you like. Because we need to collect this diamond in this short life. Again, this is just a personal perspective. It's not something based on a solid science in the Quran. But this is, when you read in the Quran, when you listen to the scholars, true scholars, you find these are the diamonds. And the title of the diamond is to be beneficial to the others. The first diamond, and in my perspective is the most important one, is making da'wah. I'm not saying it's the best. Allah is saying, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ who is much better speech than this who is actually making da'wah, invitation to Allah Azza wa Jal. And do a right state and says, I am one of the Muslims. When Allah is asking who is better, it means the answer is no one better than that. This is the best. <laughs> the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we all know the hadith. If Allah Azza wa Jal makes you a way to guide someone to his religion is much better for you than the whole dunya, much better than the beastie camels at that time in the Arab. This is the most wealthy money. لَأَنْ يَهْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجُلًا وَاحِدًا خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِمَّا طَرَعْتْ عَلَيْهِ الشَّمْسِ أَوْ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنْ حُمُرِ النَّعْمِ So these are the evidence. Ayah, hadith. In action, Whatever good deeds I'm going to do, including da'wah, including dhikr, including qiyamul layl, fasting, doing everything, when I die, it's finished. But, if I invite someone to Islam, and he became a Muslim, all of his good deeds, and his children's deeds, and their children, and their children, to the day of after, everything they do, it's in my scale on the day of judgment. It's in my reward. I got it. So if I'm making dhikr one million times and I'm staying in the mosque, I'm doing nothing, I only get this million reward if I got it. 
But if I invite others, everything the others are doing are actually coming to me as well. This is why one of the scholars has said that our life is short, but how many years you are living. But if you are doing da'wah for the others, then your life is extended as much as the age of all of those peoples you invited to Allah Azza wa Jal, you made da'wah to. It's not only just for the non-Muslim, it has also been to the non-practicing Muslim. I have been to some European country, and actually those who are born Muslims, some of them know nothing about Islam exactly as the non-Muslims. So why we don't do da'wah? I'm speaking here to the highest hierarchy in Milton Keynes, university student, graduate, master degree. Where is the da'wah? Where is our work in da'wah? Everyone is doing a project in MSc, in PhD, in whatever, research, in publication. MashaAllah, this mind is working very well in dunya. What's the plan for da'wah here? Are we going to say the plan of da'wah, just take a table and go to the town center in Milton Keynes and make da'wah five minutes and go? Or do we have to invent another means of doing da'wah? Where is our mind? Here, this Islamic society should be something with the top priority. That we have to be sure that we make the da'wah. Because Allah Azzawajal has made us to live in this country, at this moment, in this place, for a reason. So our responsibility towards the others, because we love them, we love them to be a Muslims. We don't want them to be Muslims to increase the numbers of Muslims. Or to have someone with blue eyes or blonde who speak about Islam to support the Middle East or Islamic cause. No. We need it for them, for their benefit. And how you invite someone to a religion if you are not enjoying actually this religion. So, I urge you as a society here in this community, especially you are in a closed community at the university and around it, we need to put this in action. If you can't make speech, make the tea, make the coffee, support, do anything. And I know across the whole country, there are people who are experts, <coughs> will come to your door, will give you a course one day, how to make da'wah, what's the priority, how to answer the common things. You don't need to be a scholar to make the da'wah. But this is where the diamond is. Imagine it, this is where the diamond. I invited someone to Islam, he became a Muslim, he's praying at night and I'm sleeping and I'm taking the reward. He's making dhikr and I'm not, I'm taking a reward. It doesn't mean I shouldn't do it, but this is how we should look in business model to our religion. So the first diamond should be making da'wah. And as I say, it's much easier than we think. The second thing is, from my opinion, and again it's a personal opinion, is looking after the orphan. Looking after the orphan regarding he is Muslim or non-Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, Ana wa kafilu li yateemi kahatayni fil jannah. I am, and the one looking after the yateem is like this in the paradise. No space in between. And when you read the Quran, <coughs> did you ever think when Allah azza wa jal was talking to his Prophet, Mentioning his blessing, what was the first blessing Allah has mentioned to his prophet? What he said to him, Alam yajid kayatiman fa'awa. Allah has found you an orphan. He looked after you. This comes before, wa wajadaka dalan fahada. It comes before guiding him to Islam that the big blessing, the first blessing that Allah looked after you as an orphan. And at that time, no one can tell me the Prophet was Muslim. He's a child, he's an orphan, Allah has looked after him. It's a big blessing. And in the same surah, you find the first order. Don't upset the yateem, the orphan. And this order from Allah come before making da'wah. فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرْ وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَرْ وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ 
So how close this thing to Allah Azza wa Jal? Do we read in the surah? أَرَأَيْتَ الَّذِي يُكَذِّبُ بِالدِّينِ Who is the one not believing in this religion? فَذَلِكَ الَّذِي يَدُعُ الْيَتِينِ The one who is upsetting the oath. You think who is believing, who is saying that there is no God. The one who is saying whatever. Allah make it as he is a non-believer. فَذَلِكَ الَّذِي يَدُعُ الْيَتِينِ And in a hadith, despite... They say this hadith is a weak as a narration, but the meaning is actually collected in other hadith. يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا بكى اليتيم اهتز عرش الرحمن لبكائه إذا بكى اليتيم اهتز عرش الرحمن لبكائه فيقول الله عز وجل لملائكته يا ملائكتي من ذا الذي أبكى هذا اليتيم وقد غيبت أباه في التراب فتقول الملائكة سبحانك لا علم لنا فيقول الله عز وجل اشهد يا ملائكتي أن من أسكته وأرضاه لأرضينه يوم القيامة When orphan is crying the throne of الرحمن الله عز وجل is shaking and Allah is asking who is upsetting this offer? Angels say, Wallah, we don't know. So, Allah Azza wa Jalla is saying, Oh my angel, who is ever going to make him silent, make him happy, satisfy him, I will satisfy him in the day of our judgment. So, when you look to this context, you find why Ibn Umar radiallahu an was just making, putting his hand over the head of the yateen, because he know with every hair there is going to take reward just by doing this. Orphan is a child. Muslim, non-Muslim, you have taken the reward. And I will tell you something personal. My father, may Allah bless his soul, he was professor in Al-Azhar University in Egypt. A few months before he died, he said to me, can you please take some money from my account, put it in your account in Islamic Bank, whatever comes from this money monthly, can you please look after four orphans in our village? I said, fine. And then he became sick and he was very busy. And he got to coma for a few days and then he wake up. What you have done for the money told you to do it. So, I'm sorry, I'm busy, you are very sick, I'm looking after you, I don't have time to do this. Then he said to me, if, if you don't do it when I'm alive, how can I trust you do it when I die? So I have done it. A few weeks after that, he died. One of the Lazar scholar, is a colleague of him, called one of my relatives, because he was a bit bound, can't go anywhere. And he said, I know that he has died, but do you know if he has done any good deeds before he died? My cousin said, I'm not aware I will ask for him. Why? He said, just I have seen in my dream, he's walking to the paradise with four orphans. So, when Allah Azza wa Jal is making a blessing to the Prophet, that this is one of the important things in life he should do, we should all. Especially no one here is going to be difficult for him. Sometimes 25 pounds, 30 pounds a month, you could be able to look after your team in one of our countries. So the first one, diamond, is making dawah. Second diamond is looking after your team. Third diamond is to be beneficial to your Muslim brothers. وَمَنْ فَرَّجَ عَنْ مُسْلِمٍ كُرْبَةً مِنْ كُرَبِ الدُّنْيَا فرج الله عنه قربة من قرب يوم القيامة ومن يسر على معسر يسر الله عليه في الدنيا والآخرة ومن ستر مسلما ستره الله رفي صلى الله عليه وسلم is saying who is easing difficulty on one of the Muslims Allah will ease from him one of the difficulties of the day of judgment رفي صلى الله عليه وسلم also saying 
for someone to go and do something for his Muslim brother to help him is much better than making i'tikaf in my mosque for a month. You think I'm giving i'tikaf for an hour reading Quran, zikr? If you go to support your brother, he needs your help in something. Why you don't do it? Your brother is sick. Next to there, in the other city, Lister, Nottingham. You send him text message. May Allah give you a cure, ya akhi. Ya akhi, walk to him and make visit. And sometimes the difficulty is not only about money. I might be stressed. I might be had difficulty in my studying. Difficulty in my work. I'm having problems. Go, ya akhi, and make it easy for me. Allah will make it easy for you. It's much better than you staying in the mosque of the Prophet for a month just making zikr and dua and pray. Why? Why you don't do that? Wallahu fi awn al-abdi ma dam al-abdu fi awn akhi. Allah is doing your own things, looking after you as long as you are looking after the others. So don't be mixed up. What are the priorities? The other thing for the diamond we need to look at is to be beneficial to every human being. Yes. Beneficial to every human being. Yes. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, إن الله عبادا اختصهم بقضاء حوائج الخلق حببهم إلى الخير وحبب الخير إليهم يفزع الناس إليهم في دحاجاتهم هم الآمنون من عذاب الله يوم القيامة Although the relation of this hadith is weak but the meaning is in other hadith as well that Allah Azza wa Jal there are people who are actually Allah Azza wa Jal has given them health, just health that you can walk to support someone or give you money to spend on someone to support the others Allah Azza wa Jal make them safe on the day of judgment. I'm concerned about the time, but the last thing the diamond you have to think about it is to be beneficial even to the animals. We all know the prostitute who went to the paradise because she actually gave a drink for a thirsty dog. And the woman go to the fire hill because she looked the cat neither feeding the cat or leaving her away. So religion, when you look into it, when you pray, when you make dhikr, when you make fasting, when you go for hajj, you are doing something for yourself. But the religion about the Muslim is in action. The Muslim has to do something. It's not enough to say, I am praying my fard, alhamdulillah, I am doing the dhikr. Where is your effect in the community? And sometimes I'm surprised that we think about things, these are Muslims or non-Muslims. For those who are living here, when we are going to die, we are going to willing hospice. Did you ever visit willing hospice? Did you have seen people dying there? Some of them are alone, need someone to care for them. Did you ever thought about taking some flowers or some nice chocolates and go to visit them? Do you think by your mind, that you're making zikr is better than going to visit those. The non-Muslim, this person there, you go and visit him, give him chocolates, support him, you will take more reward than sitting here in the mosque making yatikaf. When you are saying we are arranging a marathon in Milton Keynes to fundraise for the hospice, no single Muslim. What is uh, We only run for a mosque if we are going to run. Sorry, you are going to die there. They will look after you there, and they need the money. What's the problem? Why you can't do and make fundraising activity to support this community? Not to please anyone, not to be I'm a nice Muslim integrated in life, but this is part of your religion and your commitment. We don't seek but our deeds except to make Allah Azza wa Jal satisfied from us, not anyone else. So the Muslim is a true beneficial to every single one, starting from da'wah, even up to the end. I say this, I 
الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم اجعل أحسن عمرنا آخرة وأحسن عملنا خواتمة وأحسن أيامنا يوم نلقاك اللهم متعنا بالنظر إلى وجهك الكريم مع الوجوه الناظرة إلى ربها ناظرة اللهم انصر الإسلام وأعز المسلمين اللهم أصلح لنا أولادنا وأصلح لنا زوجاتنا وأصلحنا لأولادنا وزوجاتنا واجعلنا من عبادك الصالحين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واستغفروه يغفر لكم وأقم الصلاة